Hello Europe, it's William calling from Wooby Blogs and I'm joined by Porig in Ireland and Patrick in Austria and we're here with a Eurovision news flash. That's because yesterday Ireland's RTE finally revealed the five acts and songs that will compete in Eurosong 2015, Ireland's national selection for Eurovision. Now, don't call us haters, but this selection is so middle of the road, we want to paint a yellow line down the stage. Despite that, our readers are very excited and have been voting in our poll since yesterday afternoon. So far we have 881 votes, and we're going to go through the acts one by one in reverse order of how they're performing. So, currently in last place, it's Alex Saint and the MJs with She's So Fine. Porig, why don't you have the honors and go first? Yeah, it's not really an honor, but... Um... Yeah, he's doing a rap song. Rap and Eurovision don't mix. Substandard rap and Eurovision definitely don't mix. Um, it sounds dated and cheap. And yeah, I don't like it at all. And it, like, it, there's a reason why it's only got about 20 votes in our poll. That's right. It has just 23 votes out of 881, <laughs> which equates to 2.62%. Patrick, are you more optimistic? No. <laughs> uh, actually, it's so horrible. I, I mean, I don't like rap music at all, and this proves my point why I don't like it. <laughs> it's just nothing. I hope Ireland is wise enough to don't send it to Eurovision. Yeah, I, I just don't understand why RTE would even put this in the selection. Yeah. <laughs> because mm. they're great songwriters in Ireland, they're great musicians in Ireland, but Alex Saint is not one of them. So. Yeah. The song is She's So Fine, and she may be fine, but the song is not. Um, I was looking at my notes here. The lyrics are ridiculous. She's so fine, ain't nobody looking better. Always on time to the rhythm of the music. She's so fine, finger on the trigger. She burned my mind. This is drivel. It's sheer drivel. And I believe it's also last with the odds makers. Is that right? Yeah, Paddy Power have it last. Um, and like, it's not even a song. Do you know sometimes you could say it sounds like a song that potentially might be rescued by a good stage performance? Yeah. Because like, usually that's boring ballads and then the, uh, usually a female singer could come out and belt it. He's not going to be able to come out and like, do anything majestic with that. It's really upsetting. When I saw the name and the MJs, I thought, ooh, Michael Jackson, <laughs> Mick Jaggers, but no. Just a hot mess. Um, yes, Patrick, anything redeeming about the song at all? No. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, right. it's, it's really just horrible. Crap. Well, then we'll move on to the act that is in fourth place in our poll. It's Kat Mahan. 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 Thank you, sir. <laughs> With 67 <laughs> votes, which is equivalent to 7.64%. The song is Anybody Got a Shoulder. Porig, is your shoulder ready for Kat? No. Um, well, she will be crying, so maybe it's ready. But um, <laughs> it's, it's trying to be like what Ireland were in the 1990s and 1980s. It's not a modern song at all, but it doesn't even match up to them. If you were to put her beside Linda Merton's ballad or Neve Kavanagh's ballad, she does, she's she's not up to scratch even with that standard. Um, and it's it just kind of meanders along and then it's over and passes you by. Patrick? Actually, it's a beautiful song, but there's nothing special in it. Like, it's just there without leaving any expression on me. A cat has a beautiful voice, of course, but the song is so dated, and it's written by Paul McGettigan, so that's really no wonder then. <laughs> ah, poor, could you explain who that person is? Yeah, Charlie McGettigan um, won Eurovision with Paul Harrington back in 1994, and so he's written this song he won with Rock and Roll Kids, and um, he's decided to enter with this song. And the bookies seem to think, I think their bookies are adding a bit of value to his name because they have her second in the odds at the moment, which is a bit crazy. Yeah, and we should really consider that a lot of Eurovision voters are teenagers and they weren't even born in 1994 or when this man won Eurovision. Um, many people, especially outside of Ireland, won't know who he is. Yeah, um, because I remember last night, for some reason on the SoundCloud clip, instead of having Kat's face, they have his face. Yeah. And then Angus was looking and he's like, oh, it's the Irish Dean of Ber Merlin. And it's kind of that reaction. So, um, yeah, I don't think they remember. And see, they won back with the juries back in the day as well. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't even the public that voted for him. 
Oh, I think the bookies need to put some younger people on their panel <laughs> determining these odds.、Um, you know, I must say the song is lovely. To me, it sounds very Irish.、Um, I don't know if it does to you, but it, it, in that sense, it is special to an outsider.、Um, but I just think only old people would vote for this, and sadly, they don't vote because like they're asleep. When the Late Late Show is on,、um, and also it, even if it's a nice song, you know, this is to Patrick's point, it has to be special. And like Pernilla from Finland in 2012, it was a nice song,、mm. but it went nowhere. Brigitte from Estonia 2013, again quiet, nice song. At least she had a power note at the end, whereas this、yeah. does not.、Um, when it ends, I'm kind of underwhelmed. I'm like, oh, where was the climax?、Um, sadly. In any event, we will move right along since none of us are too enthused with Cat to the song in. Third place in our poll, it's Molly Sterling with "Playing with Numbers." She's got 113 votes, which is equivalent to 13 percent. So finally, someone in the double digits. Porig, what do you know about Molly, and what do you think of her song? I don't know anything about Molly, but、um, she, well, she's 16, which kind of doesn't really sit well with that song because she's singing about like a miser, her misery after. Breaking down with a relationship and like what relationship has she been in when she's only sixteen that could cause her so much grief? And she's nice vocals. The song lets her down a bit,、um, but I think it really stand like I don't know what she really looks like. Like it's hard to tell from there's a music video and it's all shadowy, so her age is kind of hidden. But like if she's there singing this misery ballad and then Michelle and Anisha from. San Marino come out singing an age appropriate. It's really going to stand out, and it's going to jar. I think that's a really good point. You should play to your age, not try to、yeah. hide it, <laughs> Patrick. Well, actually, Molly can sing well, and that we all know that. But the song is just—it's—it's like the song who always comes second in in Ireland. Like the televoting is take yeah okay, but the jury loves it. So like crashing down with Amy, I don't yeah. Uh, it's just a bit too slow and too silent for Eurovision, and even if it's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, she asks, "Do I owe you something in the song?" And I'm like, "Yeah, a better song, but you also owe、yeah. it to yourself because she can properly、yeah. sing." So it's a shame.、Um, chorus is lovely but forgettable. I'm trying to remember it, and I can't. Yeah, it's like Laura O'Neill last year. Absolutely. Uh, well, moving on. There are two acts who are making an impact in our poll. In second place, we have Erica Selen with her song "Break Me Up." She's、um, achieved 303 votes, which is more than a third. She's at 34.55 percent, so she's in it to win it. Porig, does she deserve to be this high in our poll? Yes. Um. Yeah. Like, it's not the best song in the world, but it sounds modern, which is a step up for Ireland. There's no fiddles, no diddly eye, no moany ballads, no banshees, nothing like that. And then the explanation is that she's Swedish and her entire team is Swedish. But I don't think that's a problem if they're going to give us a decent song. I'm all for it. I totally agree. I mean, the fact that she comes from the outside, who cares? Ireland, Ireland has lots of immigrants, right?、Um, yeah. Does she live in Ireland? No. Oh. She's no connection. <laughs> Until now. Okay, so I guess as you said before we spoke, the Kitty Brucknell of Ireland. Yeah, she's like the Kitty Brucknell of Ireland that Kitty was going around trying in other countries. People are kind of guessing that she might have be a reject from Melfest,、um, that she could have submitted it there because I think in Melfest they tell them earlier on if they're true or not. But she she was like she has a Melfest history because she was the original、um, singer for Com by Timothy J. But they took it off her and gave it to Tim Jones instead. <laughs> oh, the shade of it all! I mean, it's interesting you say she has this Melfest experience. That might explain、mm. why her song, it, to me, is the strongest in this selection. <laughs> Patrick, what are you thinking? Well, actually, before that, Porig and I already discussed about it、um, that she could fail because she's from Sweden and I'm from Ireland. Because in 2010 there was a girl from Austria. Her name was Monica Ifkic. And she placed not so well with、uh, an okay song, and it probably was because she's not from Ireland. But at the end, "Break Me Up" is so modern and catchy. This could really work well in Eurovision. Oh, absolutely! I think this is the most modern of the lot. Yeah,、um, it's like country music mixed with Avicii, made for now. Somebody I read somewhere on one of the blogs somewhere that it's like the Coors meets Scandi Pop kind of sound. Um, that it's got a bit of an element for them, but like going back to it, there's people giving out saying, "Oh, that 
foreign nationals with no connection shouldn't be going around. And then they're forgetting about Gina G and Celine Dion, uh, who were kind of legends in the Eurovision world, and neither of them had any connection with the country they sang for. So, Absolutely. I mean, and ultimately, if the public is making a decision, you're not just supporting the artist, you're supporting the public's decision. So she's mm -hmm. therefore Irish and a representative of Ireland. Yeah. I just, borders are fluent, we're in, are fluid, we're in Europe, European Union, can we just love, like Eurovision heart connectivity. Um, yeah. But you know, her lyrics, in a way, kind of speak to all the haters. She says, break me up, I'll take that fight, I won't stop before I die. That's right. This is inspirational, it's a dance track. The she could kill it on epic. performance. Absolutely. And she has experience with, um, she was a contestant on Swedish Idol. So she has all that experience performing in front of a crowd. Because Ireland last year had a killer song, but Casey Smith just couldn't do stage performance. Yeah. I and that's... Oof. Not to hate on RTE, but, you know, they get good songs, they get some good artists, and then they get to Eurovision and it's like, I don't know, they spend two euro fifty on the performance. <laughs> like, yeah. I feel like Casey, if she had been given a bit more support, they could have done something more with that, you know, mm. even if it meant rearranging the song slightly or, work, I don't know. Yeah. I just, I felt bad for her because, I mean, she did quite well with our jury. We loved the song. Yeah, you know, off the she stage. came third or fourth in the jury. Unbelievable. And then RTE gives us this selection, which blows yeah. my mind. It makes you think there are backroom deals being done. There was kind of a talk on Twitter, we haven't got to Nikki yet, but that... Nikki and Erica stand out uh, so much above the rest, and Erica is Swedish that they're kind of nearly making it so that Nikki will win. People are saying that it looks like that. It surely does. So let's go to Nikki. She is currently leading our poll with 371 votes, which is 42.3% of all those cast. Her song is called Memories, and it is surely sticking in all of our memories thus far. Porig, is this the best song? Should it win? I'm, I've constantly, last night when I was going to bed, this was the best song. When I woke up, Erica was the best song. I'm going back and forth between the two of them. The one thing in its favour is that it does sound modern, like it's from this decade. The problem is that even commenters are saying in the comments for the polls on the blog that it's another kind of shouty, screamy song. And we already have several of those chosen. You've, we've the two warriors and we've time to shine. So how much more does your vision need this year of that and whether it will get lost? Patrick. Well, I love this song and it's my absolutely favorite. Uh, like, we need another Kavanaugh in Eurovision and I think Europe, <laughs> Europe is ready for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, this could bring Ireland back into the race and I wouldn't mind that. I mean, her voice is good, and, but I'm not sure that if she delivers it like that live. I mean, the same happened to last year's uh, Ar Irish represent her but yeah mm -hmm. i hope that ireland will send her <laughs> and of course she's a familiar face from eurovision 2011 porg rewinding she was up against jedward which was always going to be a huge task if jedward yeah. had been out of the contest would she have won yeah i'd say so unless somebody else had popped in but yeah because she was miles above the others but the thing about patrick's just saying about her live performance the Late Late Show studio is renowned for being bad and having bad acoustics and everything. But if you look at that video from 2011, she actually pulls it off and she sounds pleasant and she sounds nice. So if she's able to sound well in the Late Late Studio, I imagine she'd be well capable of sounding well at Eurovision. So that I think she can pull it off live. She you, sang Falling back then. You would think if you're going to stage a selection for a song contest, you would hold it in a venue that was appropriate for a song contest. Mm. Yeah, mm, but now things. they've been having it the last, yeah, every year since 2009. All right. Well, it's been in the late, late show. So three, and, oh, go ahead. Yeah, and Ireland's fortunes haven't exactly been great. <laughs> Ryan Dolan was amazing coming <laughs> next to last. All right. So final questions. Who do you want to win? You can only choose one. No waffling. Porig. I want... At the moment, I want Erica, but I think Nikki. Mm. Patrick. Nikki. Definitely. Ah, want and will. Both. I want the Swede... I'm sorry, I want Erica to win, <laughs> but I suspect Nikki will win for mainly what Porig said about the resistance. It does look kind of set up for Nikki and the fact that she, Erica's Swedish isn't going to help her. Yeah, because just when you look, RTE got 
and nearly 400 they definitely got over 300 submissions and that are these the top five and like how bad was mary burns and ryan dolan's song that like <laughs> alex saint got in ahead of them because we we know what they sound like we i imagine that they have enough clout that they can get decent songwriters and that did they really have worse songs than alex <sighs> <laughs> you know, I really think they went for variety, but it's almost like saying, let's throw this random song in so we look like we're modern and hip and appealing to the masses, but it just comes off as pathetic and sad because we can see right through it. Um, mm. Give us a variety, but don't give us a variety of crap. Patrick. Yeah, yeah. as you said, it's, 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 it's kind of, I, I don't understand it that, that somebody like Alex Sun comes through and, and, and Ryan Dolan not. I mean, we all know how he sounds and uh, I, I just can't believe that. That's unbelievable. Well, mm. the pot of gold is not at the end of this rainbow, but we wish the best to all of the contestants, particularly Nikki and Erica. Thank you, Porg in Ireland. Thank you, Patrick in Austria. We will be back with more predictions, polls, odds, and news from Ireland in the coming weeks and the build up to Eurosong 2015. So please stay tuned here on Weebly Blogs. Thank you and goodbye. Bye. Bye.